friends, we will solve this question which is from year 2014, uh, session 1 from mathematical logic. The question is which one of the following propositional logic formulas is true when exactly two of P, Q and R are true. So, four different formulae are given and exactly one formula has to be selected as the answer. So, this question has unique answer. That is number one. Second, uh, the question is asking whenever you make two variables true, exactly two of P, Q and R are true. So, whenever you make two variables true and third one false, the formula should evaluate to true. Now, after reading this question, one another question comes to my mind or should come to our mind like which two variables the question is talking about. Is the question talking about a particular combination of three variables like 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 let me draw it here P Q R exactly two we want true so it can be true true false or it can be true false true or it can be false true true in all the three combinations you can see exactly two variables are true and therefore exactly one variable is false now which particular question or which sorry which particular combination the question is talking about i mean uh, should I be checking a particular combination or should we be checking all combinations? So that is the fundamental confusion that may arise in your mind. Now, uh, if you observe this question further, in option A, B and C, uh, the structure is something or something, something or something, again something or something. And if you observe the last term in the first few options, option A, B and C, it is same. P and Q and negation R and therefore uh, if I substitute the third combination that is true, true, false in the second term what it will become? Uh, I will take P equal to true so this will become true Q equal to true R equal to false and therefore negation of R will become true now true and true and true will become true and by domination law something or true will become equal to true. So this will be true and therefore this will also be true and therefore this will also be true. So what I mean to say for a particular combination of the true values of P, Q and R option A, option B, option C all are looking like answers because both the formulas will evaluate to true but the question is very clearly saying that which one of the following or the question is very clearly asking which one of the following propositional logic formula is true that means the formula should be true for any combination of the two values it should be true on ttf it should be true on tft and it should also be true on ft T. And what we have done, just based upon one combination, we are trying to evaluate the formula. So, you need to check all the three combinations. The formula should be true for all these three possible combinations of P, Q and R. And therefore, while proceeding, you may try to substitute the values of P, Q and R in all the formulae and try to get the answer. But, we have got three combinations for PQR that is TTF, TFT and FTT and substituting three combinations in four options we will need four multiplied by three, twelve evaluations of the formula. Twelve times you need to check whether the formula is true or false and therefore, okay approximately twelve times, sometimes it may happen that you substitute the first combination and you get the value as false and therefore you come out of that particular option. But on an average, around I would say uh, around 7 or 8 uh, something like that substitutions have to be made and I think it is a time consuming activity plus you may make a mistake.
next day, uh, somewhere we may evaluate a uh, wrong substitution and we may assume uh, mistakenly a correct to be incorrect or incorrect option to be a correct one. What I would say, if this question could be solved without substitution, then that would be a great idea. And in fact, it can be done. So basically, let us try to represent what the question is trying to say. Question says, you make any two variables true, other one false, the formula should evaluate to true. Which two variables true, which one variable false, we don't know. In any one variable I will take, I will make it false. Remaining two variables will become true. Evaluate the formula, that should come out to be equal to true. That means, the question wants P dash Q R or P Q dash R or P Q R. And I am using this uh, notation which is not from mathematical logic. This notation is more commonly used in digital logic but that would not impact the answer. So for the sake of convenience and simplicity, I will use this notation. Now, if you observe this question, one of the term is already present and what is that term? It is P and Q and negation of R and that term is present in three of the options and therefore we need to take care about these two terms. Now, by applying the distribution law in the reverse direction, uh, I can take this R common outside, I can merge these two terms like this. I will take it P bar Q or P Q bar ended with R or P Q R bar. It's a simple distributive law applied in the reverse direction. Normally we distribute this into this, here we are merging this into this and now if you observe this particular term okay what is that term that term is basically the formula for xor it is p bar q or p q bar this is the formula for xor so p all of us must be knowing that p xor q is equal to p bar q or p q bar and XOR is an operator which wants inequality because result will be true when both the operands are unequal either true false or false true that means I don't want equality here I want inequality and inequality means no equality so what I will do just to bring this in the option equality can be represented with the help of P double implication Q because double implication is an operator is a connective which is based upon equality but I don't want equality I want inequality because I want XOR because I want PQ to have different values this is equality so you negate the inequality sorry you negate equality and the result will be inequality so this term I have converted into this then ended with R this becomes one term or P and Q and complement of R. So I am now using the notation which has been used in the question. Now you can see very conveniently we have obtained the answer as option B which is negation of P double implication Q ended with R or P and Q and negation of R and therefore option B will be the correct answer. And then you should be convinced that if you apply proper approach in two lines or maybe in three lines this particular question can be solved. And while actual solving even this particular step may be skipped plus you will be very confident that your answer is correct. So important thing is whenever you solve any question while practicing just don't leave the question as soon as you get the answer. So whenever you are solving any question, you are stuck, you get the answer and you leave the question, you keep it aside. But that is, that is the bad practice according to me. Our objective should be to devise, to discover, to find out even better methods to solve the question. And when I say better methods or better technique or better approach, I mean to say a method or technique or approach which saves time and increases accuracy of the answer.
Thank you.